All right, we're going to continue with Daniel chapter 3. Um, and um, I forgot in the last video to finish up chapter 2 because Daniel has just revealed um, by the power of the Holy Spirit um, the interpretation of the dream that Nebuchadnezzar has of this huge statue of the kingdoms that are going to rise and fall and of the of um, the Jesus the Messiah basically coming in the end days and setting up the, his millennial kingdom. So he just revealed this to Nebuchadnezzar in 46 says, Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face, prostrate before Daniel, and commanded that they should present an offering and incense to him. The king answered Daniel and said, Truly your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, since you could reveal this secret. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts, and he made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and the chief administrator over all of the wise men of Babylon. Also Daniel petitioned the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. So Daniel is kind of like the right-hand guy of the king. Um, so now chapter 3, you fast forward 20 years. So 20 years have passed by. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its width 6 cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather together the um, sat satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, and magicians, and all of the officials of Providence to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magicians, the magistrates, and all of the officials of the Providence gathered together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Um, so, 20 years go by, and he's starting to think just like a lot of us think, ah, that prophecy, that's not going to come to pass. I am the head of gold. He said, I'm going to live forever, and my kingdom's going to reign forever. I don't believe that God of Daniel. And so, what does he do? He makes an image of gold. Now, remember, in his dream, only the head was gold. Um, everything else was silver, iron, bronze. Well, this thing is, he's making the whole entire statue gold, okay? And um, that's because in his pride, he's saying, no kingdom is going to destroy me. I'm the head of gold, and this whole statue is going to be a head of gold. And everybody's going to worship me, They're not, and um, they're not going to worship Daniel's God anymore, okay? It only took 20 years for him to um, get led astray, okay? So then he says, um, then a herald cr um, cried aloud, um, to you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, um, lyre, and um, um, psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. So at that time when all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, and lyre, in symphony with all kinds of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And so one of the um, the things that um, the pastor was saying is that this statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up is a precursor um, to basically what the Antichrist is going to do in the book of Revelations. Because in the book of Revelations, the Antichrist and the false prophet are going to make an act, um, a statue um, um, that is made in the image of the Antichrist. Just like Nebuchadnezzar made this image in the image of himself, the Antichrist is going to make an image um, that represents himself, that looks like him, and that people are going to have to bow down and worship. So it's a precursor. King Nebuchadnezzar is a precursor to the Antichrist and what he's going to do. And in the, in the book of Revelations... The Lord actually calls um, the one world order and the one world religion that's going to come to play in um, the end times during the tribulation. He actually calls it the new Babylon. So it's kind of this prophecy of Nebuchadnezzar and is a precursor to the Antichrist. Um, and he, one of the things the pastor was saying too is look how music is used. Music is used because um, the devil, Satan, was a worship leader in heaven, and he um, was an um, awesome musician, and the, and um, basically it was pride um, that cast him out. He had pride, and he wanted to be like God, and so his pride was his downfall, and so Satan uses worship to bring people into idol worship and to lead people astray. That's why you see all of these musicians 
um, who go into satanic worship and that get completely lost because the, Satan uses it to draw people into his wickedness. Um, and so that's why it says that the, the that when you when they hear the music, it's this call of Satan to bow down and worship this idol, um, and that's why music is so powerful, um, and that we have to be careful what we're listening to, um, because music can be used of the Lord to usher us in, into worshiping Him, but it's also a, a ploy that the enemy uses to draw people into satanic and idol worship. Um, and then one of the interesting things about um, that John Corson said is look at the dimensions of this statue that Nebuchadnezzar made. Um, it's six cubits, 60 cubits by six cubits wide. So 60 cubits tall by 60 cubits wide. And then John Corson said that there's six musical instruments that are used. So what's the name of the Antichrist or what's, um, is 666. So it's interesting that Nebuchadnezzar has this image that's 60 by six, by six musical instruments, it's just a reference to the future Antichrist and his demonic statue that's going to rise up. Um, so it says, Therefore at the time certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set up over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in a rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you... Do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up. Now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and falsery, and symphony with all kinds of music, that you will fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? So the, Nebuchadnezzar is mad. He's like, when you hear this music, you better bow down, bow down and worship it, or you're going to be cast in the lake into the fire. Same thing's going to happen to the Antichrist. The Antichrist and the false prophet are going to set up this um, demonic statue that's actually going to come to life and speak. And basically, it's going to be, you better bow down and worship the statue. You better get the mark of the beast, because if you don't, you're going to be killed and martyred during the tribulation time. Um, and so... It's the same type of thing. And the Antichrist and the, is going to be incensed that people will not worship him because um, at first he's going to come in, the Antichrist is going to come in and he's going to be a man um, who is charismatic. He's going to be seducing the people into worshiping him. And this is kind of like what Nebuchadnezzar did with the people, the Jews, um, when he brought them over. He brought the cream of the crop and he wasn't mean to them at first. He's seducing them into loving the culture, into loving um, the um, the delicacies of the kingdom, into losing their identity. It's the seduction that the Antichrist and the devil uses to draw people in. So that's how Nebuchadnezzar did it when he was brainwashing the youth to try to get them to become Babylonians. Same thing the Antichrist is going to do. He's going to sway the people into losing their trust in God, into losing their identities, into being, you know, soon before you know it, you're going to be worshiping this Antichrist. Um, and so that's what he's trying to do. It's a seduction that the Antichrist can do in the first three and a half years. And the Jews are going to be deceived. Um, they're going to be deceived into believing this Antichrist is their Messiah. It's not until the Antichrist is going to sit himself in their new temple and declare that he be worshipped and that they worship the statue that they're going to realize that they've made a mistake and they're going to be destroyed, but a, a remnant is going to be saved. And so the remnant is going to be kind of a picturing of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we, will, we, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the, God, the gold image which you have set up. So basically, they're saying, um, we're not going to worship your God. Not going to do it. Um, they said, our God is able to deliver us. But even if he's not, 
his will be done. God's will be done, not ours. Okay, so that's the faith that we've got to have, um, that we may be destroyed in the fiery furnace. God can save us, but even if he doesn't, um, we still trust in the Lord because his will, they were submitting to his will. And in Hebrews, in the, uh, in the Hebrews um, um, one, chapter, the chapter of the heroes, it talks about um, Daniel um, having faith that went into the lion's den and that, the, um, and that faith to survive the fiery furnace. So it was by faith that these um, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were heroes of the Bible. It was their faith in the Lord that come what may, your will be done. Um, and so um, basically it, um, they tell him that God's will, you know, he saves us, he saves us, he doesn't, he doesn't. We're still not going to worship your image. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression of his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Picture, he's like demonic for that. Ah. Okay. Uh, he spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it, than it had been usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and all of their other outer garments, and they were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So the poor guard, the guards that were basically um, taking them and dragging them, it was so hot that the guards got burned. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. So it was so hot that the the guards that were that let them down there got, that got burned um then king nebuchadnezzar was astonished and he rose in haste and spoke saying to his counselors did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire they answered and said to the king true o king look he said i see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt and the form of the fourth is like the son of god so basically they get thrown into this fiery furnace. It's seven times hotter than normal. The guards get burned up, but they go in and they're loose. They're not even bound anymore. And they're walking around. And in the midst of them walking around, there's one that's like the Son of Man. That's Jesus himself. Jesus is in the midst of them, walking with them. They're not bound. They're walking around talking. Um, Nebuchadnezzar sees them, sees, it, sees um, the four um, in there. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God. See, now he knows. Servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire, and the um, um, satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word, word and yielded their bodies, yet they should not serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made an ash heap, because there is there is no other god who can deliver like this. So um, Nebuchadnezzar sees like their, this god, who saved you, this is the God of God. And he had, he had declared that 20 years earlier, but he had let pride get into the way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Um, now, prophetically speaking, this is so cool, I never even saw this before, um, the, the fiery furnace was set seven times hotter than normal. Seven. What is going to be, um, what is going to be hot in trying to destroy the Jews for seven years? So the correlation between the fire, the fiery furnace being heated seven times, is a correlation to the seven years of tribulation, where it's going to be attacking the Jews, because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were Jews. Jews full-on, sold-out, dedicated to the, to the God of Israel, and who had faith in him. And there's going to be a remnant of Israel who's going to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego during the, fiery, um, or during the seven-year fiery furnace tribulation. It's going to be 144,000 Jews, Jewish men, boys, or teenagers, whatever they are, 144,000. And they're probably going to be young because it says they're going to be virgins, right? 144,000 Jewish men, the um, um, young men, that are going to be full on, on fire for the Lord Jesus. Um, or Yeah, they're going to be sold out for the Lord Jesus. They're going to be sealed 
right? They're gonna, so they're going to be Messianic Jews. They're going to be sold out, and they're going to be divinely protected during the years of tribulation, and they're going to go out witnessing to, their, to Israel. And, um, and they're going to be protected. Jesus is going to be their protector. He's going to seal them with the power of the Holy Spirit. And just like Jesus was in the fire furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Jesus is going to be with the 144,000 during the fiery um, tribulation. They will not be touched by the Antichrist um, or destroyed. Um, and then a remnant of um, Jews that are able to escape the Antichrist are going to be saved in Petra. So God, just like he saved uh, this three Jewish boys because they had faith in him, and they're, they're called heroes of the faith, Jesus is going to be divinely protecting a remnant in Petra of the Jews during the tribulation and the 144,000 um, Jews, Jewish young men, who are going to be like his Pauls going out and witnessing to everybody. Um, so that is uh, totally cool. Um, let's see if I got everything. Uh, I think so. Um, I think that was uh, all the notes that I had for there. Um, so anyways, it's, I think that was it. So it's totally cool. It's cool how Daniel um, is already um, prophetically speaking about the tribulation and what's happening and it's in these stories. These stories are practical um, in nature about how we should have a faith like Daniel, Shadrach, and Michigo, uh, um, Abednego, but it's also prophecies that, that we know what's coming. It's all intermingled in the book of Daniel. Lord Jesus, we just thank you and praise you for the book of Daniel. Lord Jesus, that is unfolding prophecy before our eyes, and because you don't want us to be unaware of what's happening, and that, Lord Jesus, you said that in the last days we would understand the book of Daniel, that we would have insight into it, um, and by the power of the Holy Spirit that we would um, understand the secrets that are being revealed. So, Lord Jesus, we ask because we're continuing to study Daniel, that you, through the power of the Holy Spirit would reveal more and more understanding to us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Love you guys. Bye.